the image of Christ. Tongues is not an end to the baptism. It is a means to an end. You need to use your gift of tongues every day. Amen. You need to pray in them every day. I want to take just a moment and thank you very much to Pastor Mark and Pastor Jeanette, Pastor Chris and Pastor Doriana for allowing this ministry to fill the pulpit for these services. This second week was on God's schedule. Uh, it, it worked out, and I believe it was a God thing. I, I believe people's lives are changed. I believe you'll never be the same. You have to stay in the Word, though. You have to stay in the Word. I, I want to thank you uh, so much for your giving and the offering. I never ask, hey, how much has come in because I don't want it to affect my messages. Amen. It, it's like a Christmas gift after every meeting. Amen. But I know I have planted and I know the harvest will be exactly what is not just needed but wanted. And so I thank you for all of your kindness and generosity. Many of you have purchased some tapes. If you have not as of yet, please stop by the table. There is a lot of music albums, message series, uh, the brand new message series from the last time I was here. Uh, it's three, actually, three of them. The Secret to Success, Getting Plugged into Your Holy Ghost Power, What Happens When You Pray in Tongues. You need that series. And the other series is Understanding Your New Identity in Christ. One of the messages, I believe that series on understanding your identity in Christ uh, is worth it. Both messages are are powerful it's not my preaching it's God's word but one of them is entitled the power of one Jesus prayed father let them be one even as you and I are one and a prayer that we so often do is what we call the power of agreement where if any two of you on earth agree is touching any one thing it will be given them by my father and that's true but you would be up a creek if you're the only one in Daytona so it's a little deeper than what you read. The Word is always deeper than what you read. If you just believe what you read, you are still living shallow. Amen. And so I, uh, uh, that power of one, though, what is the power of one? The power of one is when you can make your mind obey your spirit and the two shall become one. This is how Jesus did everything he did on earth because his mind was subject to the Holy Ghost. How do I get my mind subject to the Holy Ghost? You need that series. It'll help you. Uh, also, all of the messages uh, of these services have been recorded tonight. Well, tonight's will be the 10th one. It's going to be good. Uh, you're going to learn how to live rich in a world of famine. How many is ready to start living rich? Amen. And so we're going to see it from the Word, how to do it. Just very quickly, uh, we started this whole thing off. If, if this is your first service, what, what God is doing, He is building our confidence so we can prosper. Amen? Prosperity is of God, and that's not just financially. It is a mindset. Prosperity is a mindset. Poverty is a mindset. So we're breaking the old mindset, bringing in the new. The first message we began with was the widow's anointing. Uh, then cast it out. How, you know, Jesus said, you can't do what I'm doing because of unbelief. Unbelief in what area? You, you need that message. He said, if you can cast it out, you can cast it out. Uh, that it'll really help you. Then uh, good vibes, how to, how to give off good vibrations. And then the Samson anointing, understanding what we've been taught for years was really, well, I won't even go there. And then beautiful feet. How awesome is the authority of those who understand their position in Christ. And then how to be led by the Spirit. And then it's party time. Uh, graduating from child to son, from slave to son. And then last night, changing your diet. And tonight as well. If you have CDs, if you have ordered CDs, they'll all be ready right after the service. Give us about 10 minutes, 15 minutes after I finish the message. And they'll all be ready. Please don't just grab them, and even though they're yours, uh, Miss Pam will be back there to help you. We're going to have you mark your name off the list. That way, if there's someone not here that is entitled to a set, we'll know who the remaining sets belong to. We have just enough 
CD sets just enough which was a blessing if you want a CD set and you're not on the list they'll just have to be mailed back to you also all of the series and cassettes are available as well there are three extra cassette series so if you're uh, if you're not on the list and you want a set uh, they can help you with that you can write a check for anything um, cash credit card visa mastercard whatever will help you out will be a blessing to the ministry. I'm going to give this to you hurriedly tonight because you have other things to do, but I'm going to be very direct to the point. I want you to stand to your feet for the reading of the Word, if you will. It is an honor. Again, let me say from this office, from this personhood, that it's an honor to stand and minister in the presence of senior brother and sister Triplett. Uh, we were talking today. I said, my Lord, man, you've been preaching longer than I've been around. And sometimes you feel a little inferior. You feel like, oh, they preached this 30 years ago. So it, but it's an honor to have them here. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to... <laughs> Amen. The book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 6th verse says this from the New King James translation. But without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How many is going to start diligently seeking him? You're not seeking him for healing. Stop asking God for healing. That's a poverty mentality. Stop asking God for what he said he's already done. That's poverty thinking. Do you realize every time you ask God to do what he says he's already done, you make him out to be a liar? When I mark the word says ask, I beg to differ. It means to declare. If I'm asking, I don't have it. If I'm declaring, it is finished. And we're learning how to build our confidence so we can prosper. Are you ready? Are you ready to start prospering? Father, in this house tonight, your word is upon my heart. Now, breathe it through this vessel to speak for you and not just about you. Father, I release the anointing over the hearts and the lives of these people. I lay the axe to any roots of ideologies, traditionalisms, or religiosities conjured by man, even in true effort to seek your face. Father, we want to understand your word from the spirit and not just the letter. So, Lord, we want to learn how to live rich in a world of famine. And this night... You're going to lead us, guide us, and direct us how to prosper in all things and be in health even as our soul prospers. And we declare it to be done. Amen. You can be reseated if you will. I believe it is God's will for us to prosper. I'll say it again. I believe it is God's will for us to prosper. Years ago, theologies of men was, well, if you're poor, you're holy. We didn't know any better. We just figured the less we had, the less that could get in the way of serving God. God said, I want you wealthy so you can establish the covenant. And he's not just talking about money. If you haven't been in the services, you need the series. Biblical prosperity is not the amount in your bank account or your CDs or your investments. Although it entails that. Biblical prosperity is recorded when Jesus said, And with you, nothing will be impossible for you. Biblical prosperity is the ability to think like Christ. That is biblical prosperity. Three out of four believers, according to scriptural statistics, dwell in a mindset of poverty. They hear poverty messages and they walk in poverty. You are what you eat. Amen. So after these services, I believe you ought to just get hungry saying, God, lead me, guide me to truth so I can prosper. It is God's will. Third John 2, I would above all things that you may prosper in all things and be in health, but it will be to the degree you have renewed your mind. To the degree the believer renews their mind, it is to that degree. Let me put it this way. When God created Adam, spirit, mind, and body, Adam was perfect. 
would you agree? Adam didn't know how to die. He only knew how to live. It took Adam 900 and some years to learn how to die. We have perfected it so much, the male's average lifespan now is around 75. Oh, we're getting good at dying. But God's raising up a church that's getting good at living. Amen. When God created Adam, he was perfected in spirit, mind, and body. The three avenues of man. The number of perfection is seven. Adam was seven, seven, seven. When he fell, what's this? He was six, seven, seven. His spirit was separated from God, but he had to learn how to walk into a fallen state. Therefore, 666 is the mark of the Antichrist. It is the symbol of one who has reversed the anointing. When you became born again and I became born again, at that moment, I didn't become 777, complete in, 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 in spirit, mind, and body. I became 766. Many people get to heaven because their spirit is perfected, but they live this earth in hell because they never renew their mind to think complete again because your body will only do what your mind tells it. Are you with me tonight? So if you and I are going to prosper, is it possible to prosper in this world? Yes, it is. Amen? Let me show you something. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Very familiar passage. Give me just a few, men, a few moments of your time. And I, I, I want to show you. I'm, I, I want to get into your business a little bit. And I, I want to deal with some, with some issues that, that's going to stir you and it's going to help you. How many has got some stuff you need to see done in your life? Okay, what's this? Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 25th verse. Jesus said... Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the flesh seeks." I can tell if you're led by the Spirit or by the flesh by what you seek. If you're seeking healing, you are led by the flesh. If you're seeking the tangible, you are led by the flesh. This is my last night, so I'm going to do a drive-by, amen? Now, what's this? He said, all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Well, then why don't I have them if he knows I need them? Because you're seeking them. Are you sure you're teachable tonight? Well, why don't I have my healing? Because you're seeking it. Well, why don't I have my household saved? Because you keep seeking it. Well, why don't I have that better job? Because you keep seeking the job. Many people, and, and I want everybody to look at me because I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm about to say. It is never, ever God's will for a believer to live or die with a curse, period. Never. Well, in the mark it says in the Word, it's appointed man wants to die. I beg to differ. Poor translation. It says it was appointed a certain man of male gender once to die and after his death, the judgment. You choose to live or you choose to die. Well, how do I know if I'm choosing to die? Because you're seeking the harvest. You're going to get a hold of this. 
you're going to start thinking, my God, every day is a holiday and every night's a party. Amen? It's fun to prosper. Amen. Let, let me keep going. That's not even exactly where I'm going. He said, your heavenly Father knows you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Oh, there it is. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things so He doesn't mind us having things. He just minds us seeking things. I, I, now I'm talking to some people here tonight because this isn't even was the, was the direction I was planning on going. But God's just put it in my heart. Some of you are, are perplexed in your thinking. It's been a huge dilemma in your mindset over the past few years. God, you told me it's mine. Why don't I have it? Why don't I have it? Because you're seeking it. What he's telling them is this. You will never manifest prosperity until you get your priorities in order. You must become kingdom addicted and not health addicted. Health is a natural response to addiction to His will. Hear me. You can't be money addicted Good job addicted. Household salvation addicted. You've got to get addicted to the kingdom and all these... Let me put it this way. I'll just be very blunt with you. If you're having to ask Him for anything, it's because you're not addicted to the kingdom. Because He just said, if you seek the kingdom, all these things will just happen. The reason the church has been taught how to pray to ask is because they weren't taught how to be addicted. Genesis, the 11th chapter. I've alluded to this many times over the past several days. Somebody say this with me. I believe it is God's will that I prosper in all things and be in health. But it will be to the degree I seek the kingdom. Now, are, are, you, are, you, are you really believing what you just confessed all right what's this the answer to your dilemma is seek the kingdom the answer to prosperity is seek the kingdom first stop seeking stuff and seek the kingdom what's this Genesis the 11th chapter 27th verse this is the genealogy of Terah Terah begot Abram Nahor and Haran Haran begot Lot and Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans then Abram and Nahor took wives the name of Abram's wife was Sarai and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah the daughter of Haran the father of Milcah and the father of Iscah but Sarai was barren and she had no child and Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot the son of Haran and his daughter-in-law Sarai his son Abram's wife and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan and they came to Haran and dwelt there so the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran now the Lord had said to Abram get out of your can get out of your country from your family what does that mean Mark it means break that curse and change that mindset get out of your country and from your family it means break that generational curse and change that mindset in your house and from your father's house to a land that I will show you, I will make you a great nation. What does that mean, I will make you a great nation? I will make what you say come to pass. Is that that name it, claim it? You doggone right it is. Yes, it is. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Now, let me talk to these people. And you will be great and your name will be great and I will make you a blessing. Now, 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 look at the common denominator here. Who gives us all things? God. When does God give us all things? When we seek the kingdom. You're going to see the parallel he's teaching here in Genesis 11 and 12 over in Matthew 6. 
He's saying, what's this? He's saying, I'm the one that has blessed you, but I can't bless you unless you get your priorities right. You'll never prosper. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all... Let me read, read that because that's not what's happening. And through the United States government, all families of the earth shall be blessed. Well, that's the way it ought to read because the government's had to do our job. It's the government had been to feed the hungry and the poor. When it was the church's responsibility, but the reason the church hasn't done it because they're too hung up in a poverty mentality. If all you want is to be blessed for you, you have a poverty mentality, amen? So we're trying to break that. Don't be offended. We're trying to break that so we can be what God has called us to be, amen? Let me continue reading. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Sixth verse, And Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Look over, please, to the tenth verse. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. Thirteenth chapter, second verse. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. God placed his own man in a poverty-stricken land and let him be rich. That means your surroundings are not supposed to affect you. You are supposed to affect your surroundings. You're going to get this tonight. Abraham is the schoolmaster of prosperity who is about to give us a class 101 on how to live rich in a world of famine. There are diseases out there. There is death out there. There is poverty and lack out there. But you can live... Ri well, not Mark. I've got diabetes in my family. Abraham, break that curse and change the way you think and you'll learn to live rich in the land. Amen. Now watch this. I don't want to take the time and read it all, but God had told Abraham... I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And one of Abraham's responses was this. How can this be seeing I have no seed? I have no heir. Somebody say seek the kingdom. The first thing that you must do in order to... Now, are you even interested in living rich in a world of famine? Amen. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to bless other people? Wouldn't it be nice to pay off other people's bills? And I don't mean just somebody else in the house. We have incestualized the anointing long enough. I mean go to an unbeliever. Go to a Hindu. Go to a Buddhist. Go to a Muslim. Go to an atheist, an agnostic, and say, You know what? I just want to pay off your car for you. Well, why would you do that? I just want to show you the goodness of my God. Oh, brother, you better not do that. The times are hard. Not where I live. Well, you live right next door to me. Yeah, but I live in a whole new mentality. You can live right next door to somebody and be different from that person. Are you hearing me? What do I need to do, Mark? Well, we, we need to understand that Terah's dad, or, or Abram's daddy, Terah, had a call from God on his life. Terah was called to the place of Canaan. Now, years ago, I used to sing that old uh, church song and... A lot of people got goosebumps over it, and many of you may not even know it. Canaan land is just in sight. There will be no sorrow there in that tomorrow. I should have known right then. It was religious because Canaan does not mean heaven. Canaan in the Hebrew means place of the merchant or place of the lender and not the borrower. 
God had called Abraham's whole household to the place of prosperity, the place where they were the lender and not the borrower. Let me get more specific with you. God has called you and called me to the place that we are the lender and not the borrower. How do I become the lender and not the borrower? Well, number one, you've got to become addicted to the kingdom. You've got to become an addict for the things of God. You've got to become like a junkie and you start having DTs on Wednesday about 4 or 5 o'clock because you know church is coming at 7 and you're going to get a fix of the Holy Ghost. You've got to get addicted on a Sunday morning instead of rolling over and hitting the snooze. You ought to just start having some DT saying, man, I hope 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock hurries up and gets here. i got to get in the Word. Are you, are you hearing me? You ought to start having DTs about the thing of things of God. When it comes tithe and offering time, you ought to start having DTs because hurry up, pastor, tell us we can give our offerings because you're so addicted to spreading the gospel. You've got to become addicted. The enemy wants to rehabilitate you. He wants. He, the enemy does not mind you seeking healing. As a matter of fact, it flatters him. Because if you're seeking the tangible, you're not seeking the kingdom. And even he knows if you're seeking the tangible and not seeking the kingdom, then you have a poverty mentality. Hello? You could announce a prophet's coming to town and has the gift of the miraculous. And you would fill the house anywhere they went. Why? Because human nature is, I want what I need. When in fact, if I'm addicted, I want what he needs. See, this is how Abraham learned to live rich in a land of famine. Why? Because all the odds were against him. Everybody look at me just a moment, please. The enemy thinks all the odds are against you. Because see, even though Terah was called to Canaan, Terah, Haran, and Nahor, the father and two sons, died in Haran. Haran in the Hebrew language means desolation, want, and lack. Three out of four believers are living and dying in poverty. Why? Because they do not break the curse and change their mindset. We bury them by the dozens. Hold me up, hold me up, hold me up. If it happens, seven come eleven. God gets all the glory and God gets all the questions if it don't happen. And enough is enough. It's time to start believing the word is true and God cannot lie. And that it's his will that you prosper in all things and be in health. And not one person is excluded from that will of God. Not one. Three out of four of them died in lack. What made Abraham, and this is really what got me searching this. I said, Lord, Abraham had never seen you. All he heard was a voice. What made Abraham follow a voice he just heard? He was so sick of everybody dying, sick, impoverished. He was so sick of death, hurt, lack, separation. He said, I'd do anything to break this. He said, and so Abraham became addicted to more. You will never live rich in this world of famine until you get sick of lack. Let me put it this way. You'll never get motivated till you get frustrated. If you're content living with cardiovascular problems, you'll live with them. If you're content having back problems, you'll live with them. Let me talk to these people. If you're content being broke and just living from paycheck to paycheck, you'll live just going from paycheck to paycheck. But when you start seeking first the kingdom of God, all this stuff just takes over you. You've got to get addicted. You must become addicted. Abraham got addicted. Why? Because the old life, he had had enough of it. How many's had enough of sickness? Show me your hand. 
How many's had enough of depravity? How many's had enough of depression? When you've had enough, you'll, you'll turn and become addicted to God. So instead of saying, oh, so-and-so's at church today, well, they must be feeling better. It ought to be, boy, they're addicted, aren't they? They are absolutely addicted. Well, so-and-so started coming to church faithfully. What happened to them? They must have really got a good healing. No, they got really addicted and decided, you know what? I'm not going to seek the healing. Healing is supposed to just happen. If I'm having to ask for healing, it's because I'm poverty-minded. This is how some people can come get their healing and then they don't serve God anymore. Why? Because they never were addicted. So God took Abraham to school to show him how to live rich in a world of famine. And the first thing he let him become is addicted. Somebody say, I'm getting addicted. And if you have become a little complacent, I'm not condemning you. I'm not beating you over the head. I'm just saying, come on, let's start putting God's stuff first. If you've put your job first, you've done it long enough. Let's put God's stuff first. Besides, your job is not your source anyway. Your job is your seed. If you're treating your job as your source of your income, you're poverty-minded. Let me keep going. What did God do? He made Abraham learn his voice. Many believers do not understand the voice of God. Well, something's been telling me. And I've done it too because we we weren't really sure, God, is that you? Mark, how can I know the voice of God? The voice of God will always speak of better things. God will never tell you, well, you just, you just carry this around as your thorn in the flesh. <laughs> Amen. You'll get your healing when you get to heaven. I was told that stuff all my life. In our churches, I was told that stuff. Well, if you don't, I was listening to a well-known speaker. I love that ministry. And even to this day, I do. But I was traveling. I was thumbing through some radio stations. And I heard her say, well, we're talking about faith today. And I thought, oh, hey, that's right up my alley. And, and she's going along. She said, well, I believe, you know, anything can happen. But if you don't get it here, you'll get it when you get there. I said, turn that trash off. Because that is so contrary to the word of God. Are you hearing me? God's voice will never tell you you'll get it when you'll get to glory. God said, Abram, get to Canaan now. We've got to learn God's voice if we're going to learn how to live rich in a world of famine. If you're going to prosper, you've got to learn God's voice. God will give you unctions. He'll speak his word to you. He said, Abraham, don't learn to live and die like your family. Break that curse. Here, let's move on. Let's go on to a better place. God will begin to wake you up in the night hour and give you dreams of something more than you have now. Visions of something more than you have now. That's God's voice. Abraham was following a voice only. We have so trained ourselves, we need to see him move first. We're going to have to get to the point. If you're going to live cutting edge Christianity, you're going to have to start following a voice. Hello? Start following a voice. Somebody say, I'm going to start hearing him. What's this? The third thing God taught Abraham is what a seed was. I would venture to say most believers in the body of Christ do not understand the power of a seed. God had to teach Abraham what a seed was. Everybody do something for me. Uh, take out your billfold or your car keys or your checkbook, a credit card, something. Everybody have something. If somebody around you doesn't have anything, put something of earthly value in their hands. Please do that for me. We're, we're going to understand what a seed is. 
What was the promise of God to Abraham? He said, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So we're not just supposed to be one that gets a blessing. We are supposed to be a source of blessings. You're supposed to be a source of blessings. Amen. Now, everybody get you a Bible. If you don't have one with you, grab your neighbor's hand. I want you to hold both those items up, your, your keys and your Bible. Now, now, what's this? Do you remember the first seed that God gave Abraham to work with? Everybody shake your key or your money or whatever you got. Yeah, that's your Ishmael. That's your Ishmael. Now, your Bible, that's your Isaac. So you have two seeds to work with. You can put them down now. You have two seeds to work with. The only reason a believer will not live rich in this world of famine is one of two reasons. Either they are stingy or they are blind. If a believer is not prospering, it's because they're either stingy or they're blind. Well, I'm glad he saved this for the last night. I didn't know I was preaching it the last night. Hello. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember when God first called Abraham out? He said, I, he said, I have no seed. He said, how can I make all this happen if I have no seed? Oh. So God said, well, I'm going to give you a seed. What was the seed that was coming? Isaac. What is Isaac? Isaac is a type and shadow of your gifts, your callings, your anointings. But what happened first? Sarah got a little antsy and she come to Abe and said, Now, Abe, I can't give you any children, but I got this girlfriend working for me that I don't, I don't mind if you go away for a few days. And Abraham's like, well, well, are you sure, honey? <laughs> Amen. Well, and then, you know, boom, here's Ishmael. Now, was Ishmael the promise? Did Ishmael bring him satisfaction? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Abraham loved Ishmael. He loved him so much, he argued with Sarah when God spoke through her to tell him to pack a lunch. Now watch. That let me know God doesn't mind me having stuff as long as I'm willing to seed it when he asked for it. So what is a seed? A seed is anything that brings you pleasure in this life. Watch. The Lord spoke this to me. I want to give it to you. A seed is something that represents your love in the natural. A seed is something that you struggle at giving. A seed is something that has value to you. A seed is something that you know must be planted because of your desire for something else. Watch this. A seed is what you can see with the natural eye, but it contains a spiritual meaning inside. And the Word became flesh. A seed must have physical shape going in in order to have physical shape coming out. Let me put it this way. Every promise of God is already available in the Spirit. But you have to plant it in the natural to make it birth in the natural. God told Abraham, get rid of Ishmael. Why did God want him to sacrifice someone he had allowed to come into his life? Why does God now want me to seed something he has blessed me with? Let me read something to you. Out of 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 10th and the 11th verse. This is out of the Living Bible. I like this translation. For God who gives seed to the farmer to plant. Oh, oh, how many of you are blessed? Okay, he blessed you to plant. 
not to stick in barns. What's this? And later on, good crops to harvest and eat will give you more and more seed to plant and will make it grow so you can give away more and more fruit from your harvest. Yes, God will give you much, so much that you can give away much. And when we take our gifts to those who need them, they will break out into thanksgiving and praise to God for your help. Let me give you a Floridian translation. He said, I want you so blessed. He said, you can drive around with your bumper stickers and stand on street corners and pass out tracks. He said, but if you want to win the lost, go out there and meet their needs, even financially. And at that point, they're going to break out into thanksgiving and give praise to God for your help. Hello, we've been good about standing on corners telling people they're going to hell. But if we remember, God says, I'll win the lost by my goodness, not my judgment. The church has preached judgment because they've been too stingy. Hello, God wants us blessed so we can be a blessing. I've got to become addicted to the kingdom. I've got to learn to hear his voice. What does he speak to me? He tells me better things, but he also tells me what Ishmael he wants. I was at a church some years ago, and thank God I've never had to go back. They invited me in there on a Sunday morning. The pastor, he got up, well, let's hurry up and get the offering out of the way so we can let the brother go. And afterwards... At lunch, he said, well, Brother Mark, I apologize. We had so many people out. We've got a lot of people sick, and they're out of work. And I'm thinking, you numb nut. No wonder they are. Because you're you're teaching them just give God what you can. Father, bless those that have not to give. That is so unscriptural, it's ridiculous. He said, I'll give seed to the sower. The problem with the church is this. We've been seeking the stuff instead of the seed that produces the stuff. We've been seeking the healing in our prayer time instead of saying, Father, what's my seed? Father, what is my seed to release this? If you're going to learn to live rich in a world of famine, we must learn the voice of God because the voice of God will always speak seed. He tells you the harvest, we request the seed. Hear me. I was, I was, uh, I, I, uh, where was I? Where was I? I, I was some, somewhere northeast. Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. Now, I like nice jewelry. I, I like nice jewelry. Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. Now, it's an Ishmael. You understand that? It's an Ishmael to me. It's not my Isaac. It's an Ishmael. Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to give one of your rings to, I had a, a couple of ushers assigned to me at that uh, uh, church and and one of them was a young black boy and God said give him one of your rings I said which one now see some years before that I said get behind me Satan I rebuke you don't you torment me like my amen I'd have been praying in tongues trying to get rid of that voice I come back the next night and I gave that boy my ring I'm, I'm just showing you how to live rich in a world of famine you know, when, and when 9-11 hit, I had pastors, charismatic, ch- I go into all flavors. It doesn't matter to me. I'm like Baskin and Robbins. I, I just, I'm, I'm out for the hungry, not the denomination. And, and I, uh, I went to one particular charismatic church and I was setting up the equipment. The pastor, we were talking, we're friends. He said, Brother Mark, did 9-11 affect your schedule any? Do you have a lot of cancellations? I said, no. Why? Oh, man, I've got a lot of guys I graduated with. They're, they're having to go back to work because churches are canceling on them. And, every, and I thought, my God, people that's supposed to know so much about the Spirit of God and living in famine... I thank God I learned about the power of the seed. I gave that young boy my, the ring God told me to. A few months later, understand this. God never asked you for an Ishmael to get Ishmael only to get you more seed. A couple months later, I was in, in another state, and this couple walks up to me and said, Brother Mark, we own a jewelry store, and God told us we're supposed to make you an initial ring. 
Now, don't think we're crazy. I said, you're not crazy. Go right ahead. Amen. <laughs> well, the one they made for me was 40 times more valuable than the one I planted. You, you understand what I'm saying? It, Mark, how will I know it's God? Because you won't want to do it. That's pretty simple. I was, hear me, hear me, church. I learned, and I've got a lot to learn. I, am, I don't stand before you and say, I've learned it all. I'm on a journey. But there's some things that have been established in the Word, and they work every time. And it is how to live rich in a world of famine. And one of the keys is understanding what a seed is. Amen. When I first started out in the ministry, my dad was in the ministry as an evangelist for years before I ever started evangelizing. And, and I asked the Lord three things when he called me to the ministry. I said, number one, I don't want to just go where my dad has been or they'll expect me to work in his armor. And I don't. Number two, I always want a message that will challenge the people, even if it breaks their tradition. And number three, I don't want to go broke. I said, so you're wanting me to do this. I want doors open, and I don't want to go one week and wonder where I'm going to be the next. So I began to seed. I was working a regular job and traveling part-time. I began to seed half of my paycheck into a ministry that was making it, not one that needed it, one that was making it. And within just a few months... I was booked a year in advance and then a year and a half in advance. You understand what I'm saying? I don't lack any good thing, not because of me, but because I'm kingdom addicted. I don't have to preach on money to get money. You're not my source. God is my source. I learned that if I seek the kingdom of God, I don't have to ask for nothing. It's just handed to me. You, you understand that. That's how I've learned to live rich in a world of famine. Just a few months ago, I, I had to have another vehicle because mine had a lot of miles on it. I needed another. The excursion is the largest SUV out there. I'll carry a lot of stuff. I said, Lord, I need another truck. I need another truck. I found one. I said, all right, I need to sell mine. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give it to the dealer. They don't give me nothing for it. They got to make money too, I know. So I parked mine out on some property and bought this other one, and I had a for sale sign on it in the paper for almost a month. My wife and I drove by it one day. She said, I wonder why that thing don't sell. God spoke to me. He says, where's your seed? I said, dude. I told my wife, I said, I hadn't planted a seed. You haven't what? We've been paying insurance on that thing, and you haven't seeded it? I said, whoa, chill out there, mama. We'll get one in the ground. Amen. And so, what's this? What's this? I've learned how to live rich in a world of famine. How did you do it? At that moment, I said, God, what's my seed to sell that truck for the price I want? And he spoke to me. And we heard of a family that they'd just lost their job, about to lose their home, get their utilities turned off, and it was right at Christmas time. We went over there and caught them up on their house payments, got them utilities, groceries, and everything. One week later, the truck was sold for the price I wanted. You, you see what, do you see what I'm saying? I, I, was, I was at a place I needed a CD duplicator and it cost several thousands of dollars. If what you have in your hand is not enough to meet your need, it's called seed. I said, God, what, are, what do I do? I need thousands of dollars for this duplicator. I said, what's my seed? This particular church I was at, their tape deck broke. God said, give me your tape deck. I gave him my tape deck. The next night, a visitor walks in the door and says, Brother Mark, God told me to give you this. Open it up. It was a check for the thousands of dollars to buy that CD duplicator. You see what I'm saying? So when people look at Mark and say, Oh, God's really blessed you. I just know some truth. And the truth is, God will give you more and more and more, not for you, but to plant. God wants us prosperous, but we've got to learn what a seed is. Are you getting anything out of this? We've got to learn what a seed is. Your offer, I love the way you all receive the offering here. A lot of churches pass the plate. I don't believe in that. I believe in receiving it. 
Even my little sister right here, even though she can't walk real good right now, she walks up here and she brings her seed. And some other people, hello, who don't understand the seed, Oh, I better talk to these people. What's this? Number four. I, I'm going to quit in a few minutes. You've got to... God taught Abraham not only what a seed was. He gave him two seeds that he loved. You know what? And I'm hurrying, but I asked the Lord. Because inquiring minds want to know. I asked the Lord. I said, why did you ask for Ishmael first? Instead of Isaac. You know what he told me? He said if they're free with their money. They'll be free with their spirit. Cheap people don't go far. And I'm just shooting straight with you. Is, is that alright? Young people. How many, do we have any young people or are they over at the other building tonight? How many of you young people just want to make it in life? Oh, we're all getting young now. I young. Amen. How many of you young people want to make it? How many of you moms and dads are ready to start living rich? And I don't mean just money, but church, I'm telling you, do you realize your household salvation is a spiritual blessing of God? But the reason you don't have it is because you're seeking it. You don't seek the harvest. You seek the seed. Stop asking God for the harvest and begin asking God, what's my seed to produce it? It's absolutely amazing how the word always works. He taught Abraham what to do with the seed. What, what, did, he, what did he teach him how to do with the seed? The Spirit of the Lord spoke this to me, and, and I'm guilty of it, and I'm having to renew my mind. But I was in Missouri just uh, a few months ago, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell the people to stop giving and start investing. Human nature is when we give a seed, we just lost it. Here's a good one. Well, I give and I, I don't expect nothing in return. Oh, I wouldn't tell nobody. My, here, I'll hold your sign, amen? Here's your sign. Just absolutely ridiculous because, and I've heard that stuff. But see, hear me, any good farmer plants to get harvest to plant more seed. Let me put it this way. If my life right now is the same as it was five years ago, I'm not planning. How many wants your life to be different in 05? I mean, when Pastor Mark or Pastor Chris get up here and say, it's time to receive the offering and tithe, you ought to get happy. Hello? And it shouldn't be a last-minute, spur-of-the-moment thing. Because seed time is prayer time. Oh, there it is. How are you going to live rich in a world of famine? Understand your prayer time is not a moaning session. It's not a groaning session. It's not a begging session. It's an inquiry of seed that needs to be planted. You are investing. What's this? If you can begin to desire the seed instead of the harvest you will learn to live rich in a world of famine I, w I had a lady in, in uh, another state she come to me and she said brother Mark we're having financial troubles and this is what God has told us to do and she was an embroiderer I guess that's how you say it she used the embroidery machine you know and she had a nice expensive machine still in the box she said I paid a lot of money for this 
But God told me, if I plant this. See, look, she was looking at her seed. I went back this past year. She come up to me. She said, Brother Mark, you remember me? I said, yes, I do. She said, I want to let you know we own our own business. We own a telephone store for cell phones. She said, it's out of this world. We are prospering and prospering. See, are you hearing me, church? Now because they're prospering, their home church is prospering. And now because the home church is prospering, they can help the missionaries get to other parts of the world. Are you hearing me, church? It's all about the kingdom. It's not about your stuff. It's about the kingdom. We've got to get kingdom-minded. I'm seeding to the kingdom. I don't have to ask for nothing. I know if I seed, the harvest is there. Last thing. He taught Abraham. I'm so glad Abraham went to school. He taught Abraham how to obey. It was tough enough giving up Ishmael. But when he called for Isaac, he gave him up as well. Delayed obedience is disobedience. You understand that? Delayed obedience is disobedience. Let me put it this way. Your obedience level in the natural life is your authority level in the spiritual life. Now let me say it again. Your obedience level in the natural is your authority level in the spirit. I can hear people rattle off, super size my big fry. You know, and they're just oh so holy. But when God speaks to them to use their Isaac and say, I want you to go to that person and tell them, and, and just tell them I love them. I want you to go to that person and tell them that that kid is, that's driving them nuts, I'm setting angels around them right now. They're not going to lose their way, but they're coming back into salvation. Oh, God, if that's you. Well, the devil's not going to tell you to do it. You, you see what I'm saying? Your gifts is your, it is your Isaac. God may call for an Isaac. He'll call for an Ishmael. But your obedience level is your authoritative level. How many wants to grow in authority? I got you now. You got to grow in obedience. Mark, how do I grow in obedience? Begin to ask him, Father... What can I do to build your kingdom? Because see, it's all about him. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about him. It's not about stuff. He don't mind you having stuff, but it's not the stuff. If, if, if you're st well, why does God ask me to do some tough stuff sometimes? You know why God will ask you to do something out of the ordinary sometimes? Just to see who's God. Because not what you're, let me put it this way. What you're not willing to give up is a God. So he'll ask stuff sometime just to see. I want to learn to live rich in a world of famine. I want to prosper. I want to break curses. I want to break generational curses. I want to change a mindset. I have people telling me, boy, when SARS was trying to break out and all that stuff, people say, oh, you better not get up in them people's faces and alter. You don't know. Have you ever considered wearing a mask? <laughs> have you ever considered therapy? Amen. Because, see, I just have the mentality, I don't get it. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm just not afraid because I've learned how to live rich. Well, Mark, do you ever have needs? Yeah, but I seek the kingdom. If you're here tonight and you've lost your addiction to the kingdom, 
get re-addicted. Get addicted. If you've let stuff get in your way of serving God, let's put it in priority. If you have found yourself seeking the harvest instead of the seed, let's get it in priority. If you want to know God's voice more, get into His Word more. Get filled with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. If your obedience level has been lacking, pray like this, Father, give me another chance. I dare you. Tell me to do something. I dare you. I dare you. Tell me to do something. God wants you blessed. Now, this is totally different from the way I was raised. And I was raised in a great, great home. Don't get me wrong. But we only worked with what we knew. We didn't know. Model A's were great, but we have Mercedes now. We were taught when you have a need, just believe God. And it's totally contrary to the Word of God. He said, the Gentiles seek the stuff. But my people seek me. We've got to become kingdom addicted. Addicted. Father, set on this house tonight. Make these kids addicted. Make these grandmas and grandpas addicted. God, show us healing is not something I seek after. It just happens when I seek the kingdom. When I look to build the kingdom. When I look to build the kingdom. I want you to stand to your feet if you would, please. Did you get anything out of the word tonight? Amen. We... We are kingdom builders. The man who builds his house on sand builds it in vain. Unless the Lord build the house, you build in vain. Father, just release it in this place. Let it be like a glory cloud sets on this place. You all love God. I know you do. And man, I love you all. You know, there's a lot of churches I go to because God has told me to. And then there's some I really enjoy going to. And this is one of them because you're so hungry all the time. You you don't sit there and, and, well, I never heard it that way before. You don't do that. And if you do, you're smart enough not to tell me. And I just really enjoy you all. I enjoy your company. I enjoy your hunger. And I've had a blast with you. I've shared two weeks of my life with you. And you've shared two weeks of yours with me. And for that I'm very appreciative. But I'll know you got it by how you act when I'm gone. A whole new anointing over this house in 05. It's time to prosper. I'm challenging you you tonight. I want anybody in this house, you say, yes, Mark, I have needs in my life. Show me your hand, please. I want you to become kingdom addicted. God's going to start speaking to you, seed of Ishmael's and Isaac's. You're going to start doing God's will. And as you're doing it, it's like, whoa, look, that just happened. Yeah, and you didn't even have to ask. And you know what God's response is? I told you so. I told you so. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. Father, in this house, I've done what you told me to do. I release your anointing over the hearts and lives of these people. Father, by your grace, by your mercy, I speak your word upon these people. God, you have shown us how Abraham did it. Abraham lived rich in a world of famine. And it's because he knew your voice. He was obedient. You taught him what a seed was. You taught him how to invest it. He wasn't giving it away. He was investing it for more. Father, let us live according to these concepts and principles. Let us understand as we seek you, all these things will be added to us. 
multiplied to us. I don't want to live life just enough to get by. I, yes, I, I'm doing better, but I'm not what I should be. God, thank you. Some can say, well, my back's better than it was. But if it's not healthy, it's not prosperity. God, help us to understand it's your will that we prosper in all things. And Lord, the principles of your word are true. If we give, it will be given back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give it back unto us. So, Father, we're learning how to seed we're learning how to plant. God, we're going to start operating in the gifts of the Spirit and start using our Isaacs on people outside of these four walls. God, you're, we're going to start operating in our Ishmaels so that we can invest and have more to reinvest. And this church can be used. And, and, and like God, even have homes for the unwed mother. God, homes for the homeless. God, food banks and to feed people. God, I thank you. Our resources, are unlimited when we learn how to live in prosperity. God, you've got the River Church in Daytona for such a time as this. God, you have strategically planted this family and this church on Bevel Road for such a time as this. And God, you knew I was going to be here for such a time as this. And you gave me this word for such a time as this. And these people are going to start being used to build the kingdom like never before. And God, I speak growth upon this this house that these people start seeding their Ishmaels and Isaacs and it's like oh my God pastor I gotta testify look what the Lord has done he's given me more and more seeds so I can plant more and more and give away more and more so that the lost will begin to break out into thanksgiving and rejoice about what the Lord has done in their life and you are going to win them with their with your goodness father I set this anointing over this house tonight and Lord if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that is not addicted to your kingdom I release conviction to their hearts right now to become addicted to your kingdom with your heads bowed and your eyes closed if there's anyone here today and tonight and you say Mark I, I'm not addicted to the kingdom I've let my job get in the way I've let problems get in the way. I'm not judging you. I've done it too. We all have, if everybody was truthful. We've let other things slip in and be our gods. But tonight, I'm going to ask you to be very honest with you. By you raising your hand, you're not letting God in on something new. He already knew it. He's given you an opportunity to let Him multiply you as you build his kingdom. I want anybody in this house. You say Mark. I've kind of lost my addiction. But tonight. I want to get my life reprioritized. I want you to show me your hand right now. Hold it up where I can see it. All over this house. I'm going to ask you to look up at me a moment. I want everybody that raised your hand and said Mark. I want that addiction back. I know how it is to lose your addiction. The ministry can become mechanical if you let it. I preach 300, 325 times a year. It could become mechanical if I let it. But I've got to keep a heart for the kingdom. A heart for the kingdom. A heart to say, people, look, get it. Come on, get it. There is, I love it when people say, oh, Brother Mark, that was a good word. That, I, I appreciate that. But when you see somebody's life changed, like that woman in New Jersey that had nothing but a sewing machine to plant, and the next year she owns a phone company, that's joy to say, Brother Mark, this works. I know it. It works. I've had people point out their family members in a church house and say, It works. I know. Just seek the kingdom. And all the other stuff just happens. I want anybody in this house that raised your hand and said, Mark, I've got to get addicted again. I want you to come up front right now. Father, the anointing that was upon Abraham when he set out on that journey toward Canaan, I set that anointing over this place. I set that anointing over this place. Well, Mark, if I come up there, I'm, I'm one of the leadership. It doesn't matter. 
Well, I, I'm a musician. I'm on the praise team. It doesn't matter. If you've lost your addiction, church can be a place that you go methodically. Or it can be a place that you say, God, teach me more to get more addicted. To get more addicted. If you've had ministry in the church, let me help you out. Now, I don't know anything. Pastor Mark and I talk, but we talk no business of church people's problems and what they're doing. I can promise you that. And if he started telling me, and I'd tell him very courteously, please don't tell me. Because I don't want anything to come out in the message because I know it. But if you're here and the enemy's tried to slow you down in your ministry, maybe you used to do something for the Lord through this church. The enemy will get you out of your ministry because he knows as long as you're seeking the kingdom, he can't stop good stuff from happening. Amen. And if you need to rekindle that fire, you need to be up here. If you're here, is there anyone in this house that doesn't even serve God? You're not born again. If you died right now, you'd go to hell. Show me your hand. You say, Mark, I need Jesus. Show me your hand. Is there anyone? Anyone? I always got to ask this. It's nothing to be ashamed of. In anyone at all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm just waiting a minute. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just waiting on him. I was so impressed with Abraham. He didn't have a preacher in front of him saying, Do it this way. It works. just heard a voice and said it's telling me they're better than what I've got now and I don't have to die like daddy did I don't have to die like brother did there's something different and he taught him about the seed and it changed everything the seed changes everything when you learn the seed you get addicted to the king I don't worship the harvest. I worship the God of the harvest. I want everybody up here, just lift your hands and begin to praise Him right now. I want you in your own way to begin to repent. I want you in your own way, you begin to repent. I don't know what got you out of this, but you say, God, I'm becoming addicted again. Father, I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon these people right now. Father, everyone that is up here that is willing to say, God, you know what? I don't care what people may think about me being up here tonight. I'm giving it all back to you. God, if I've been so consumed with stuff, please forgive me. If I've been seeking you for stuff, Please forgive me. I'm ready to start seeking your kingdom again. God, I am so ready to start seeking your kingdom again. I want to be addicted to the kingdom. God, you said you'd win us over by your goodness. And Lord, you've been very good to me. You've been very, very good to me. But tonight, I want to begin to seek your kingdom. All over this building, I want you to begin to praise him. Begin to praise him right now. Begin to praise him right now. Begin to praise Him. God, I release an addictive spirit upon these people. Father, I release an anointing to hear your voice. You start listening, church, because God's going to speak more. You're going to hear more clearly than you've ever heard. God's going to begin to tell you people to minister to, to witness to, to do things for. He's going to tell you seeds to plant anytime a need arises. Father, thank you. The harvest is already done. I just need to know the seed to release it. A clarity, a spirit of understanding standing and a spirit of boldness to do what God tells you to do I set this anointing over this house right now I want you to lift your hands begin to praise him as we come through you and lay hands upon you I release that addictive anointing that was upon Abraham that through you the families of Daytona Beach and and and, and Volusia County can be touched through you through your hands through your resources the the nations can be touched countries can be 
blessed through your resources. God, let that Abrahamic anointing set on this house that the children won't know poverty anymore. The parents won't know lack anymore. Grandparents won't know curses anymore. Father, I set the Abrahamic anointing over this house. Masama Baba Baba